Hello everybody and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video. Today we actually have a 2v2 for you. A little bit different than our normal 1v1s. Um, and we have some very well-known characters in this 2v2. We have in green in the bottom right hand corner here. We have Barcast TV. And on his team with an OS of 43, totally not squid. And opposing them today in red is LSR and his teammate is Malady. Now, Malady and LSR, LSR well known for his micro, uh, no, sorry, not micro, macro intensive plays here. Uh, very much kind of the sort of person that is really digs into the details of everything and is all about efficiency. Um, Whereas Malady, uh, just a general great player. And when it comes to Barcast, we all know on this channel that we love Barcast. Such a great guy. Uh, does has his own YouTube, does his own casts of things. Uh, also helps run the Bar Pro League. Um, and then above this, we have Totally Not. Um, don't actually know much about Totally Not. Uh, so it'll be nice to get to know them a bit if... Uh, Anyone knows any interesting tidbits about them? And uh, as we zoom out on this map, uh, as we actually go ahead and zoom out, this is a very, what looks to be, bland map. However, there's a lot of interesting little tidbits here. So Barcast, for example, has a little bit of reclaim around this kind of bit here, 100 reclaim, and a geo point. There's a few geo points around, not too many. As we can see, there's one here, here, here. Is that it? it? Does seem like that might be it, yeah. Um, so not many. There's a lot of metal points on this map, however, and uh, that is helpful uh, because it's a very, very spread out map. However, looking at this, the metal points are only 1.6, which isn't ideal now. Interesting of Malady starting straight off uh, going air and get a very, very early scout plane in here. Probably just to work out positioning. An early shuriken out as well with the intention of stopping any early harass. This map is going to be very much about harass because it's so spread out. There's very little in the way of like choke holds or strategic points or anything and totally not uh, raid is going to get shut down pretty quickly here shurikens actually seem to be having a bit of a problem here targeting the tick whilst it's moving but as soon as it's stuck there we go now what else can we say about this map so it's a low metal wind is a max of 10 uh, so that's not great there either um, but there's a lot of little metal points and at the same time uh, all these hills though are going to cause issues for, for vision. So we go here or oh, am I about to see something really hilarious? So EMP <laughs> EMP construction bot and on its way is <laughs> a transport. Uh, he's totally going to steal that. <laughs> oh, Malady coming in, stealing a constructor from Totally Not. This, I feel like this was his entire plan for this game, was just to come in and try and steal a uh, constructor from someone. That's great. Because uh, he's now just going to bring it back, use his commander. And I believe that's actually an armada. It is. So he's actually going to end up having both uh, factions. Which is interesting. Uh, I was saying that. He's just kind of left it at the top. There we go. He's moving it now. So I believe this is probably going to be a relatively slow game to get started. What we are seeing here is a sh shed turn of shurikens. Don't quite know what their plan is here. It. I mean, everyone's only building ticks so far. So a few grunts around. Uh, 
and uh, totally not kind of walking in his crossbow here into uh, nothing to defend it. And this one. So this map's going to be very micro heavy. We do select these though. Um, you can see how radar here for Barcast, uh, if we select the radar. See how much all these hills create lots of little blind spots. Um, so he does need to be careful um, of things being out of flank round. A radar up on this hill here and on this hill will provide a very good amount of vision. Uh, but no player either taking that point yet. These vast amount of shurikens are going to make it somewhat difficult for either player to, on the blue team rather, to make any sort of dent. However, it does look like Manady is kind of not paying attention right now. And those shurikens could have been very useful up here on the top. Now, oh... So he did capture that construction bot, and he's now moving his commander very close to Barkast. Is he going to go for a suicide? I mean, it is closer to his base. Barkast not paying attention to his commander right now. Now he's noticed it. I mean, technically, Barkast will win that trade if he wants to push it. But, LSR already with an engineer down here. No AA built down here either. So these shurikens will win out the fight if they continue to fight this. I'm going to say that won't get built in time. Does look like Malady is trying to go all in here and trying to get the Comrec. Now decides to change his mind right at the end, but his commander is very low health. 9% health on Barcast's commander. And Manadies is also at 20%. It's very, very risky. And LSR gifting uh, construction bots to Manady here. Uh, air construction vehicles are very, very flimsy and very risky. So by doing this, he's giving himself a bit of a you know, transportable and more survivable construction units. Also uh, to note here is that the construction aircraft, which we don't actually see any of, have less build power than the bot versions of uh, constructors or just in general any versions. The air ones have the lowest build power possible, but of course they can technically stack on top of each other. So there's the advantage to that there. Now, Barkast does have a bit of a number advantage here. We see that the Shuriken now has completely gone. All air has been transitioned away from, and Malady has switched completely over to uh, bots here. Oh, Barkast, careful. It's a double LLT. He knows it's there. Now the issue is, is this map is so wide, look, there's a big open gap here for LSR. But obviously LSR is heavily contesting uh, this north side where Totally Not is. Totally Not trying to gain pressure on this hill. Now, like I said, if Totally Not gets this hill, not only is there a plasma advantage if he gets something up there, but a radar up there will also provide a significant line of sight advantage. Barkar's slowly getting healed up. Malady is at 44% health. And some rocket bots here, but only one of them is actually shooting. Construction tower being built also by Malady here. And what you see here is Barcast matching Malady's forces. Malady's forces are going further north. So Barcast is following. He does not want to let, totally not get taken out by forces that you know he didn't follow it's kind of the same sort of thing as in like mobas like say for example league of legends where you know um your mid lane for example and your mid laner goes uh to the top lane you follow your mid laner so that you're not facing a 2v1 
And this is a big chunk of uh, bots here to just kind of leave. So by doing this, Barcast is assisting Totally Not by making a bit of an impact and forcing Malady to not go too heavily. Now you could go for a second approach here and just go, you know, heavy into the base. But he chose to stick with this plan and not leave uh, Totally Not out to dry. Now Totally Not's commander is in a bit of a sticky spot as we could just see on the mini map above us. And totally not now completely surrounded and going for a self-destruct. Yep, going for a self-destruct won't matter. And LSR's forces do get mostly taken out there, but... The Resbot trying to come in and get a bit of the metal, but it's not going to be enough. LSR definitely in control of that area. Meanwhile, along the bottom... Enough uh, rocket bots and fugs have now amassed the pushing Malady off of his front line. The aircraft comes in to pick up his commander to get back to safety. And uh, this little front line bit is going to get pushed down. Barkas left a bit of a hole here. These are armed metal extractors, which are very useful on this map. But as we've seen before, they're not the, you know, tankiest and, and strongest of units. Now, with these forces up here, uh, Barkar should probably just donate them to LSR. Uh, not LSR, sorry. Uh, donate them to Totally Not. And unfortunately, LSR is getting the entirety of the Commander Wreck. So that's a big chunk of metal which has gone to uh, LSR, unfortunately. And do we see him going Tech 2 with that? No, we don't. This commander, sneaky commander, Malady's calm may be in danger. 11% health. Kills enough forces here to, that's going to force Barkar back. And that was a very, very ballsy play there. But Malady managing to pull it off. Only 12% health left. Now, large reclaim field up here. 1.1k metal. This is about the same, you know, equivalent as a commander. And surprisingly not, we don't see, you know, totally not just pushing in with this force towards LSR's base. Because I would kind of expect him to. He knows the commander's up here. He could just push this way into the base. And, you know, do a lot of damage. Instead he keeps trying to go around... He has a large, large army value advantage. Well, actually, as we see here, damage dealt is split quite evenly. Um, but the army value is actually more on uh, the red-colored teams at the moment. Oh, LSR's comm being a bit surrounded here by a huge group of pawns. But... Totally not. Looks like he's pulling back a little bit. Maybe just trying not to get too many units caught in the aggro field here. Ticks around it as well. Resbot's coming in to just kind of give LSR's comm a bit of health back. Now, Totally Not obviously doesn't want to just abandon all of his units here uh, to kill LSR. Because he needs to be able to secure the wreck after the fact. But it does look like LSR's comm does go down, taking out the entirety of Totally Not's army. And uh, he does have res bots there ready. So that is going to be one com each. And Barcast actually has a few shurikens himself. Which he must have just built them and instantly removed it. And rather than tech 2, we actually see a double bot lab here from uh, LSR. And at the same time, a complete removal of the bot lab from Malady and a transition over to air again. Which is really surprising. And a forward proxy bot lab from Barcast along the bottom. So all players now have multiple Tech 1 factories as opposed to going for a uh, different approach here. Uh, of like just upgrading one factory a lot. Huge fight going on over this hill up here. 
all players kind of getting involved. Barkas yet to send any units up here though, but he did have shurikens. And with them now both being up north, this kind of would give Barkast an opportunity. Now, as we look here, obviously Barkast isn't aware of this, but look how little Malady has in units. Yet rather than sending them towards Malady, he's sending them all up north. Which, to be fair, both LSR and Totally Not currently have no commanders themselves. Totally Not getting side raided there. Uh, along the north, which is going to cause him a bit of economy damage. There is a LLT in the back to help defend that. But realistically, Barkas probably needs to just apply some pressure on the bottom. And it would be all over, really. Barkas reclaiming both of his Tech 1 labs and starting the transition to Tech 2. Little does he know. Barkas giving all of his units there to totally not so that he can at micro the stuff a lot better a lot of reclaim now in that northern field uh, 1.2k and then another basically 2k of metal there there's a lot of metal to be had and it's very very close right now as we can see here the percentages are basically dead on and Barkas doing a great job here of doing a bit of aggro damage those thugs were the only two actual land units he has have uh, pushed through here. Barkast with a little bit of AA. But this transition to Tech 2 will hopefully be enough. We do see the left team got two of the geothermals here. The third one has yet to be claimed. Now, with energy wind being so low on this map, it does seem that the geothermals are very important to be had on this map. And the left team does have most of them. That is a lot of shurikens. Now, this does mean that left team is just going to build a bit more in the way of air. This geo is about to get targeted. Barkas comp is there nearby, but probably not going to do it. That Geo is going to go down before Barkas comp can get close. That's uh, not very good for Barkas energy. He did just get tech 2, which does help. And here comes a massive push towards Barkas by both LSR and Malady. The bomber's taking the one path where there is no AA. And this is not good. Barkas been spotted. Bombers try and come in here. Barkas comp, very low health. Tech 2 Factory does manage to get an AA bot out, but it's not going to be quick enough. Barkas did have enough energy to move out of the way, which may save him here, but the swarm of bots coming in, going for the last com snipe. So many shurikens. Totally not. Desperately rushing down. Trying to save him. Barkas now been spotted. D-Gun's going to try and go off. Desperately trying to save. And some... Oh, here come the bombers back again. Barkas dodge. 2% health. Barkas on 2% health. Barkas comp been spotted again. This is very, very close. All energy being sent to Barkas to keep his uh, com cloaked whilst it was moving. And instead, actually, we see the bomb has been sent to target totally not and that was one heck of a play Barkas only just surviving by the skin of his teeth and well his base is in ruins but with still having both factories up and both of the uh, red team and well red and yellow not tech 2 it's uh, a bit risky here they've thrown everything in to that attack and it hasn't come out very well and both uh, 
Starcast and Totally Not are now also both Tech 2. I think the plan may be to get a Cerberus here. You could go Cerberus or you could go just T2 Geo. Uh, the T2 Geo would obviously do quite a bit of energy, but with the Cerberus, you mean you could basically hold down a big chunk there. So, after all that, it's not over yet. Some tech T units now in this army. Still zero in the way of air defense a little bit here, actually. And the shurikens actually getting mopped up pretty quickly here. And look how many forces totally not has. Army value is huge on the percentage side. Now over 100% of the army value is in favor of the left team, the blue colored team. Malady currently with no factory trying to save up some metal for a tech 2 transition tech 2 actually been built here in lsr's base for malady for their malady to just pump out units from and lsr will be using his uh factory here his economy to boost the production of a single factory again not often do you see this but Desperately trying to hold on here. If LSR obviously doesn't have a commander. Trying to use the Jaguars here. The cheapest unit in this thing to get out quick as possible. And desperately try and save his base. Malady just concentrating purely on microing those units at the moment. And those Jaguars have done the job. They've managed to hold back. And the advanced geothermal it has been started, not the Cerberus. And here we actually see a bit of uh, aggression here from Barcast as well towards Malady. Malady still with no uh, factory of his own that wasn't built by LSR. Jaguars are racing down to try and save Malady, but Malady's, well, if you can call it a base uh, economy is uh, going to take some damage here. But it has given Barcast the information that this bottom side is very, very weakly defended and that he was able to just walk straight in. I would say currently advantage to uh, left side here. Um, not only did they get Tech 2 first, um, but both of their players have Tech 2 factories. Both the players are already starting to get Tech 2 economies. And although the right team is pushing out Jaguars at an alarming rate here, with both players' economies going purely into one factory, um, they are very quick and they're going to be able to cover a lot of ground. But they're going to be able to cover enough ground because this is now purely on the micro power of Malady. How many fronts? Can he micro at one time whilst LSR just focuses on economy and economy only? I say that he has no economy. Well, he has no units left. He's pumping everything into this factory. Malady also now able to... Well, I'm actually not doing anything. LSR deciding it's kind of over. Barkas doing a great job here. Gifting units. And Manatee, unfortunately, never really left his base. It was kind of down here. Barcast did a great job of pushing out and kind of holding a good position. Uh, totally not. Also, got great control of this north side. Question you could ask is is it down to position? I mean, if uh, NSR went up here, would he maybe have a better job? But uh, who knows? And this is, a, this is what you see a lot with the pro players as well. Not just giving up. We can see here, Malady just going, trying his best to just rush. Trying to get the commander. Don't know if those Jags are going to go the right way.
And uh, luckily for Barkast, actually, uh, they're all going into the base, which is where his uh, com is not. And all the Jags go up in smoke as that Geo that Barkast just finished gets built. And with that, they call GG. That was a very close game. And uh, that f bombing run was basically what was doing it. Uh, luckily enough, that they did not have radar vision. There was no scouts there to provide uh, radar for the bombing run. And that kind of lost them the game. They weren't able to see where Barcast's com is. And because of that, Barcast was able to survive on a very tiny amount of health. But well played, both players. Uh, well, all players. Uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like bar videos, and I'll see you guys next time.